What's up guys, it's Eric from Rare Candy and welcome back to our Myrtle Beach South Carolina League Cup coverage that we got for you. Uh, if you didn't see already, we did upload a top 8 match, so if you want to see that one as well, I'll be sure to pull a link to that. But here we have top 4. On the left we have Alex Truong, he's going to be playing a Vespaquin variant. And then on the right we have John Oglesby playing Mega Rayquaza with Volcanian EX actually. And I do apologize guys, this game did get going and I, I didn't catch that it already started, so we did miss a little bit of the first part of the game. Uh, but it hasn't been too long into it. I think it's only been like uh, maybe like five to ten minutes into the game. So a little bit of chunk of the beginning is gone, but it's okay. We still have the, the rest of the series to catch. But here, John right now is up on prizes. Uh, he has four prizes to Alex's six. But i got to say, uh, this Vespaquin deck, if... It should be able to potentially catch up. I think it is a deck that has potential to do that just because it plays Klefki, uh, which is a cool Pokemon. You get attach it to one of your Pokemon as a tool, and it prevents damage from Megas, and then it goes into the discard afterwards. So a lot of synergy with Vespaquin here. And Alex does also play Zorark in his list as well, so that could be a decent card in this matchup too. Here Alex is going to draw a couple cards off that Shaman. He does have Parallel City. He cannot play it, though, just because uh, he already played the Force of Giant Plants. But nevertheless, I think he'll be okay. Uh, just because Parallel City doesn't do too much against Mega Rain in this matchup. Because even with three bench Pokemon, they can still just knock out a Vespaquin. But here, Vespaquin is going to do, it looks like, 100 and 140 damage. So... Uh, Alex does have a decent amount of Pokemon in the discard pile, which does power up Vespaquin's attack. There's 20 plus 10 more for every Pokemon in your discard. And then Mega Rayquaza, of course, 30 damage uh, times the number of bench Pokemon he has. Beer's going to Lysander Shaman. And, okay, he's going to Trainer's Mail. I believe we see a Float Stone there. Okay, it looks like he's eyeing down an N. So... Probably not a card he really wants to see, honestly. Just because after he takes a knockout here, he's going to go down to two prizes. I would actually maybe favor the Float Stone here. Just because if you get in, you know, that's a card you can just play down. You don't have to worry about it going back into your deck. But the end, on the other hand, will. Okay, so it looks like John's going to bench his Jirachi. That could actually be a big card in this matchup as well. Since it's Stardust Attack, we'll discard a Double Colorless off uh, Alex's Vespaquins, and we'll actually make Jirachi immune from damage on the following turn as well. But here, Alex is going to play a Buddy Buddy Rescue. Each player gets a Pokemon out of their discard back into their hand. So he is eyeing down that Klefki, like I said, just to make it sure that he can, uh, you know, be immune from attacks from John's Mega Rayquaza. If he has a Lysander, I would actually love to see that here. But here he's going to end. Which, actually, I think that that's fine, too. I think either of those plays would be good, because you really just don't want this Jirachi to attack you. Uh, that's kind of an annoying card in this matchup. So I think either Lysander taking out the threat, or ending John, taking away his options to potentially have the energy to attack, is also good, too. But I'm sure he would also love to see another Combi as well. So let's see, he does have Acrobike, I imagine we'll see that at some point. He's going to discard Lysander and Inverse Seeker off uh, for this Ultra Ball. Like I said, probably see a Combi come down. So just in case John has some sort of shenanigans to be able to knock out this Vespa Quinn, Alex will still have another one ready to go. And here he is going to take a knockout. And John's hand is not that good right now, I hate to say. That end was actually a pretty powerful end. And this is actually another reason why I would have preferred him, John to grab the float stone off of his trainer's mail. Uh, that way he could have just attached it and could have thinned it out of his deck in case of an end. But here John's going to, looks like Mega Turbo and Evolve. And that's going to be, I think, all you can really do here, unfortunately. And I kind of like not putting the Skyfield in play, too. I think that might have been a little bit of a misstep. Oh, and here looks like John's just going to sacrifice the Jirachi. 
Well, and the reason too, I was saying I like the idea of of leaving the Peril Cities because that would have reduced Vespaquin's damage output. But here he was able to Lysander uh, the Volcanian and knock that out. So it looks like John is going to super odd a couple of Pokemon back into his deck. Uh, looks like a Hoopa, Dragonite, and Shaman. So if he can just top deck one of those, he'll probably be in a fine spot. But this is going to be a really tough turn for him. And here, yet again, I think I would have preferred just I would have preferred promoting the Jirachi here, uh, just because you don't want this Vespaquin to swing on your Ray. Okay, but it looks like Alex has plenty of options to work with, though. He's going to discard a Rattata and a Combi. Okay, so it looks like he's favoring an unknown here. So he, depending on how many Pokemon he has in his discard, he might even be able to just take a knockout on this Mega Ray. It's definitely going to be a lot of damage no matter what. But let's see, so he is going to bench the the unknown Acrobike. Discarding the uh Oh god, <laughs> discards a Vespa Queen, Ultra Ball's a couple more Pokemon away. And uh, looks like he's going to grab Shaman. I don't know if he even needs it at this point or not, but Alex is just grinding through his deck at this point. And he's probably thinking, do I want an Acrobike? I'm not sure how many Pokemon he has in the discard pile, but he has to be close in terms of taking a knockout. So he's going to Special Charge to get a double Carlos back into his deck. Okay, I think that was the only thing in there. And then he's going for Seeker for an N, I would imagine. That way he doesn't deck out. Or maybe just a Sycamore. That way he can discard all of the Pokemon in his hand. Okay, so here it looks like John just wants to take a look at how many is in the discard. And it is a lot. Hmm. Here, John does top deck a verse seeker though. I'm curious why. Uh, I'm curious why Alex didn't choose to to sycamore with his versus seeker. Oh, maybe maybe it would not have been enough damage. Maybe he would have been just like a couple damage short of taking a knockout. I'm not sure. Okay, I mean, here he's just going to retreat and knock out Mega Ray. So Alex is going to take the uh, the first game here, and John was actually looking pretty good. He was up two to six prizes there, I think it was at one point. Um, so, but N is a card, and it definitely allows for some crazy comebacks, as we did see. And just in general, though, I don't think this is a favorable matchup for Mega Ray, uh, just because... Well, especially Alex, he has the Zorark, which is a great attacker against Rayquaza. Also has the Klefkies. So, and Alex does play the Evolutions from Ancient Origins, but I'm not sure if he plays Jolteon in his list or not, but if he plays Jolteon, that could also just further increase his chances of knocking out these Mega Rays. So, there's just a couple of key factors in play. I'm pretty sure John plays two Hex Maniacs, so if he goes first, if he can just continue Hex for a couple turns while drawing cards, like, that can maybe be an out for him. Again, just timing his Stardust Jirachi, I think, is another important thing to do as well. So we'll have to see how this game goes in comparison. But, uh, yeah, definitely one he's going to have to play very smart if he wants to advance to the finals. Okay, so let's see here. I think, I think John drew a Mega Ray, if I'm not mistaken. Or I'm sorry, a regular Rayquaza. So that's good. That's you know probably what he wants to see to start with. And Alex does start with a uh, three Pokemon. So nice. He has Eevee, Combi, and Azorix. That's probably probably really excited to see that. Okay, so he's gonna Spirit Link and Mega Ray, or evolve into Mega Ray right away. And here John has an Ultra Ball getting rid of a Fire Energy, which is always good. You can put that in the discard to get out with Mega Turbo. And here he's actually favoring to get the... Oh, okay, he's just going to bench the Rengaru and then use Hoopa's Scoundering ability to get three EXs out of his uh, deck. So he's definitely getting a Rayquaza and then a Shaman. It looks like that's going to be the last thing. 
he probably does want to leave one more bench spot open because he does not have a Skyfield at the moment. So he wants to potentially leave another bench spot for another Shaman um, if he doesn't draw what he needs off of this Shaman. That's what I'm guessing at least. Okay, so it looks like he's going to set up to draw until he has six. He's going to attach a double Carlos Energy, Mega Turbo. This is actually a great first turn for John. It's just unfortunate he can't attack on his first turn. Okay, uh, looks like he's just going to Mega Evolve to end his turn. I like that. He does have a Shaman in hand, but I would have rather, you know, him Mega Evolve anyways because he can't attack. And that's one less card in his hand for when he uses setup next turn. Okay, so Alex is going to discard a N and a Lysander, so probably grabbing a Shaman. So I'm not sure, what is Alex really going to be digging for? Um, you know, he can grab Klefki, uh, you know, on the early turns though, like, do you even want, I'm trying to think, like, is that even a card you want to see? Though, because you do, you actually don't really mind a knockout early on, just because that helps fuel your B-Revenge attacks. Maybe a Klefki down on Zerua could be something good. I'm not sure. Okay, so here he's going to discard Force of Giant Plants off that Acrobike. Okay, he's going to grab a Zerua. Discard that. Bench a Combi. So Alex does have a couple Shamans on board, which is unfortunate because that means John is going to be able to take a knockout. He does have Lysander in hand, so I think this is a good way. Uh, this is going to be one of the ways John can actually win this matchup is taking these cheap prizes because Vespa Queen is only a one prize attacker and so you need a way to ship the prize trade in your favor just a little bit. Okay and um, you know Alex Roy doesn't have that much in his discard pile yet. He has the four Pokemon that means he's only doing 60 damage with this Vespa Queen currently. So if he can actually draw Parallel City, I think that would be a great card to hit because that way he can get rid of that Shaman that's just sitting on his bench. He probably doesn't really want to do much with that. He doesn't want uh, John to be able to take another easy prize. Okay, so we just have an Acrobike. What does he hit here? Ultra Ball and Unknown. So maybe... I forget what's in his hand, but he can just discard the Unknown. Okay, he's going to Ultra Ball, maybe getting rid of Shaman and a Sycamore. So, probably see a Klefki come down if I had to guess. That way, Mega Rayquaza cannot knock out the Vespaquin. Okay, he's going to go for Zork. I think that's a fine uh, play as well. It's a shame he does not have a Klefki on it. That would be amazing, actually. That way, he could uh, attack for what is it? One. I forget. 130, I believe it is. Because Zork does 10 plus 30 more for every bench Pokemon your opponent has. But nevertheless, two-shotting a, a Mega Ray is still fine, just because Zorak is still only a one-prize attacker. Okay, and John does have Verse Seeker, so he can actually take a knockout on Shaman. Uh, the only thing he has to be careful about is going down, taking prizes too early. But he does have a double Carlos Energy in hand. I imagine we will see that come down onto Mega Ray. And actually, I kind of like that play. So he's going to Lysander. What's he going to do? Okay, get the Shaman. I think that's good. I think he needs to retreat and attach his DCE to his Bench Rayquaza and attack with that one. But here, I'm just not a, a big fan of this. Uh, well, maybe... I'm just trying to think. Did he attach the Fire Energy on his last turn? I'm just trying to think why he wouldn't attach the Double Carlos. I didn't. If he did attach the Fire Energy for turn, I apologize. I did not catch that. But um, that definitely seems like something he really, really would have wanted to do there. I have to say, I think it was last turn he attached it, because on his first turn, he got the Mega Turbo and DCE. In his second turn, I think he had the Fire, but I don't know. Too hard to say now. Okay, so Alex is going to be able to take a knockout here on this Mega Rayquaza. Here's going to promote his bench one. Has Jirachi. Um... And he is going to use Puzzle of Time to rearrange the top three cards of his deck, put them back in any order. So I see a Skyla there. I see a Floatstone. I'm not sure what the other card is. Oh, and then he has, I forgot, he has the uh, Oranguru on his bench. So he can actually draw until he has three cards in his hand. 
So he'll be okay for next turn. Okay, he has Dragonite. Does he have... Okay, so he has a Rayquaza and a Shaman in his discard. So he's going to be able to be, you know, probably in an okay spot as long as he can hit a double Karos energy to knock out this Zork. So here, he's going to bench Shaman. I would have preferred to see Floatstone come down. I'm not sure why he didn't attach that to Dragonite or Hoopa first. That way he could have drawn an extra card. So here he's going to play Skyla. So what is he going to opt to grab here? That's a big thing. Maybe an Ultra Ball to keep digging with Shaman. Okay, so that does look like what he's going to do. So what's he going to get rid of? Going to get rid of a Rayquaza and a Rattata. I think it's unfortunate he is getting rid of the Rattata because he can get rid of Klefkies with that thing, uh, potentially. But he, I'm not sure what the other cards in his hand were, but that may have been all he had to, uh, you know, that may have been the best target. He may not be able to afford to discard what else he has. Let's see what he opts to do here. He does have a Spirit Link and Rayquaza. Okay, he's going to attach the Float Stone. And now he's going to use Shaman to draw six. Does he hit the Double Karos Energy? And I can tell by John's facial expression, he did not. Not even a basic energy, because even if he just had any energy, he could attack with Jirachi at the very least. And now he's in a really bad spot because... This Zorak is going to be able to just wreak havoc on his field because it does 10 plus 30 for every bench Pokemon John has. So he's going to be hitting for 250. So I think John just has to retreat here and just sacrifice something. Um, you know, looks like he's going to get rid of the Jirachi here. So definitely a big missed opportunity for John that turn. He's going to Ultra Ball, getting rid of a Mew EX and a Combi. So is he going to opt to grab an unknown? That seems fine. Unknown has this cool farewell letter ability. Whenever you bench it, uh, well, not when you bench it, but if it's on your bench, you can use the, its ability to discard it, and you get to draw a card. So it doesn't count as a knockout. It fuels Vespaquin's attack, and you get to get draw a card. So pretty neat. Okay, let's see what else he has. An Acrobike. So he's going to discard Klefki. He's going to put a Klefki on his bench Vespa coin just to protect it. And here, ooh, this is actually a cool play. He's going to Lysander up a Shaman and then use Parallel City to uh, lower, lower John's bench size. Okay, and here he is going to retreat for free thanks to that Float Stone uh, and use Be Revenge for the knockout on the Shaman. And this is cool too because he has the Klefki on the Vespa coin. So Rayquaza is not going to be able to do anything to it. I think he really needs to promote the Jirachi here. I think that's going to be a big thing. And here they're just checking because Parallel City, the red side, does actually reduce Alex's damage output. So he has to just make sure he did have enough Pokemon in his discard to take a knockout. Okay, but here he has a Floatstone, I believe that is... Let's see, he has a Hoopa, Super Rod. He has a couple things he can work with. So he is going to Ultra Ball getting rid of Sycamore and a Hoopa. Uh, he can just grab the Hoopa back uh, with Super Rod, so he'll be okay. So if he's able to actually set up a Rayquaza and use Rattata to get rid of this Klefki, uh, that could be a good play. So if I'm John, I feel like that's kind of the route I want to go. Either that or just use Stardust Jirachi this turn. So let's see. He is going to put down a Spirit Link just to lower his hand size. Okay, so let's see. Um, I think John should probably Super Rod here. I feel like that's a fine play, or maybe he doesn't want to like risk drawing into these extra Pokemon he's like super ride back into his deck. So he's just going to use Shaman, draw a couple cards. He does get double Claro Synergy. Okay, he does have a Scape Rope in his hand too, so that's good because that would allow him to still take a knockout this turn no matter what. So he is going to Escape Rope, I like this. 
Well, he still needs a Mega Turbo, I should say that. That's the big thing he still needs. Okay, um... I'm not sure how many he's gone through. I think just one so far. So if he's Sycamores, his deck has been, you know... It, He's gone through his deck pretty decently, so he has decent odds for actually hitting uh, the Mega Turbo. But, I, you know, if I'm John, I would really play that super odd here because that Rattata is going to be pretty big, I think, against Vespa Quinn. I'm not sure how many of the Club Keys Alex has gone through, but he probably plays four, three to four, at, at the least, I would imagine. So let's see, he has Versus Seeker. Oh, and he's going to Skyla, okay. So that's cool, then he can grab the Puzzle of Time, which will allow him to use both Puzzle of Times that he has in his hand to grab uh, two cards out of his discard pile. Okay, so he's gonna play the double puzzle. Imagine a Mega Turbo at the very least. Maybe a Sky Field or something like that. Or maybe even just Rattata, like just regular Rattata. Uh, well, no, because he doesn't have the, the bench size for it because of the Peril City. But here he has Lysander. So he's kind of telling Alex, like, hey, like I'm going to go down to one prize. And you have to end this out of my hand. Otherwise, I'm just going to Lysander something and take a knockout. So Alex has to make something happen here. He has to probably just take a knockout on the uh, on the bench shaman. So that's probably what he's digging for, just a Lysander, uh, because that way he will be able to take the game. So this is definitely coming down to the wire here. A couple things. Really, both players need to make something happen. So he is going to play it. Does he hit it? Um, so he's playing Buddy Buddy Rescue, grabbing an unknown. Let's say he's really going to be digging hard for this this turn. So let's see if he is able to get it. I'm not sure how many he still has access to, like how many Versus Seekers, how many Lysanders are left in his deck, but I'd imagine a couple. He's going to use Farewell Letter. Farewell Letter yet again. Does he hit it? I and mean, he does get the Versus Seeker. He can Lysander Shaman for his last two prizes. So that means Alex Truong is going to move on to the finals. Definitely a super close game there. But just ultimately, Alex drew that very last card he needed uh, to clean up the match. But guys, so that's going to be the top four match. Like I said, uh, stick around for the finals. And if you haven't seen the top eight match, I'll be sure to have a link somewhere for that as well. Uh, but as usual, guys, feel free to like and subscribe. And don't forget to check out our merch over at rarecandytcg.com. If you can pick up something to help support the channel, it'd mean a lot to us. But with that, I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you for the next one.